Well, hello and welcome back to The Daily Word. My name is David, one of the pastors at Redeemer Bible Church in Gilbert, Arizona. Now, for those of you who join all the time faithfully and daily, you hear that opening phrase every day, right? Six days a week at least from one of us as pastors. But I do want to take just a moment today. Bear with me. Because if you're new here today, we want to welcome you. Um, not everybody's joining every day. Um, and so if this is your first time, these are a ministry of the church. We love to come alongside the body of Christ at Redeemer and, and have this time daily to just look at, at small portions of the Word of God. And so we're in Acts 10 today. We've been coming through the entire New Testament this year. And so if it's your first time, first of all, welcome. We love that you're with us. Uh, the other people watching of Redeemer love having you with them watching. Um, but feel free to go back and even catch up. Um, there's a lot of catch up to do. We've come through all four Gospels and now into Acts. But there's a lot of material there that we hope and pray is a blessing to you. So just wanted to kind of open us today like that. Let's get on with Acts chapter 10. Now, if you remember, uh, yesterday we focused on uh, chapter 9 and especially verses 4 and 5, Paul's radical conversion story. And it's absolutely right, again, to look at his conversion story as what it meant to him and conversion itself and how God acted and worked in that. Christ there on the road with Paul. But we really saw something else as well. We saw how Christ views his church, the oneness of his body, and what, what that looks like in his eyes. So today in chapter 10, especially as a Gentile, I'm not of Jewish descent, and that's probably many of you watching. So this is great news today. This is important great news today. And we see in Acts chapter 10, Quite a bit of narrative. We start with a little bit about Peter and Cornelius and their interaction, but then we get right into a, a pretty famous story from, from Acts, and that's Peter's vision. Peter's vision of, of all these animals and food products coming down uh, from heaven, really, in a sheet and, and being made clean. And, and there's a real picture here of dietary laws, old dietary laws, Old Testament dietary laws being lifted and those restrict, restrictions that were there, rather, being lifted. And that's important. We should note that and, and see that in the context. But we find there's something else going on here. And what that is, it's the inclusion of Gentiles into the salvation story that Jews felt was only for them. And so we see that in verse, verse 15, Peter's seeing this vision, and he's thinking it has to do just with things to eat, just with those dietary restrictions. But the Lord, in a voice, says, What God has made clean, do not call common. Do not call common or unclean. Now, this is a first hint, because the Jews would look at Gentiles as unclean, right? And so this is a first hint that there was a greater story going on here. And so we see that again um, in, in the following verses, um, even through uh, until you get to verse 34. And in verse 34, uh, Peter's been invited to, to share to a group of people. And, and so he's, he's really giving a message. He's preaching here. And he says in verse 34, So Peter opened his mouth and said, Truly I understand that God shows no partiality. So that's kind of the, that's the lesson learned for Peter here in everything that's gone on through that vision, that God shows no partiality. Now, we know, and we've covered as a church so much around what we've seen the past couple years in worldview, in our own society, whether local or national or even global, social justice, right? Um, Postmodernistic thought, Marxism, things that occupy the secular world now in their view of what makes right and what makes wrong. But with God, there's no partiality. Now, there's favor with God. God certainly had favor upon Israel. He certainly chose Israel to be an instrument to do specific work for his redemptive story in Christ, to protect his lineage 
to protect him to the gospel story that was occurring, right? When we just went through, through the gospels. But there's no partiality. There's no partiality. And so, so we, we need to see that from a, from a scriptural per perspective here. And then he says in, so, so verse 34 again, I got talking there too much. So Peter opened his mouth and said, truly I understand that God shows no partiality, verse 35, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. So this is, this is a simple but profound truth that is not based on, on your birth. It's not based on your ethnicity. It's not based on your social standing. We are all desperately in need of a savior. It doesn't ma matter race, ethnicity, gender, social placement, not at all. We all come into this world needing desperately a savior for our souls are depraved, totally depraved. Apart from, apart from his grace, there's nothing we can offer, nothing we can do to satisfy this, this infinitely high payment that needs to be made because we're unholy and he's holy. And that's the gospel. That's what Christ did on the cross. He paid this payment, and we call that an atonement. He made a completely satisfying atonement or propitiation, 1 John 4.10 tells us. Again, I'm rolling into the gospel, but, but the gospel is so critical for all of us. No matter how much we believe, we still need the gospel, even as Christians. We need to be refreshed by it. And so, so seeing that there's no partiality, I mean, that, that means we have a level playing field. All have fallen short of the glory of God, the Bible tells us. We're all dead before he makes us alive, right? So we have a common standard. There's no partiality there. And it's through grace and mercy alone. Not anything that I did, not any way I was born or how I look or what I, anything. I can't offer anything to him that pays for my own salvation. And so it's important, this verse 34, that there's no partiality. Because if there was, it would be based on something else, something we did. So hopefully, hopefully you get that. We go on and, 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 and Peter takes us through um, this message that he's given. And then in verse 44, it says, While Peter was still saying these things, the Holy Spirit fell on all who heard the word. All is important there. In verse 45, And the believers from among the circumcised, the Jews, who had come with Peter were amazed because the gift of the Holy Spirit was poured out even on the Gentiles. So, so there we go. We, we see that the Holy Spirit was given to the Gentiles as well. So as believers, we're indwelt by the Holy Spirit. It, and back to chapter one, think of the oneness of sharing the very same Holy Spirit, that I don't get one Holy Spirit, you get another Holy Spirit, but in Christ we are one, made one by a single indwelling Holy Spirit. Um, so just a great chapter to see um, kind of a practical, dietary, historical picture of what happened in Peter's vision, but also really a gospel, a foundational truth of the gospel that there's no partiality in God, in Christ, in the work of the gospel, but that it is for all who believe and repent, all who believe and repent, not based on anything that we bring. That's great news. I hope you see it as great news. I hope that's been a little refreshing today. And I'll see you tomorrow as we look at Acts chapter 11. Take care.